from the Bayfront Maritime Center in Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, Howard Rice here. Uh, I have my boat at the end of the shop, uh, scamp number two, a boat named Southern Cross. And this short video is being shot by my worthy uh, partner in crime, Rich Eisenberg. Say hi, Rich. Good morning, Howard. There you go. What a guy. And in any case, uh, I'm here working with Rich and a shipwright, and we're building this very cool uh, Battle of uh, Lake Erie War of 1812 uh, gunboat. It's going to be a school ship for Lake Erie and the kids in this uh, community. But that's not what we're here to talk about at the moment. I'm here to show you the re-entry sling system that I've developed, which has application not only for SCAMP but for other small boats. So let's take a look at uh, a piece that I've laid out on. This is actually a very cool thing, the foremast of the porcupine. It's a hollow bird's mouth spar that we've been building, and very soon I'll be finishing this off. So here is the port side re-entry sling. The sling system that I developed requires two of these, one port, one starboard, permanently mounted. And uh, let's take a look at this end. Each end of the strap has a loop in it. The entire length of the strap is 115 inches from here to the other end. On this end, there are seven loops sewn in. They're each bar tacked, and you can do that with a sewing machine. And these loops, with another single loop at the other end, allow infinite adjustment, and when we get to the boat and I demonstrate the use of the strap, you'll see why that adjustment is very important. For example, if I was sailing with Rich, Rich is a little bit shorter than I am, a shorter inseam, it's very important that he's able to step into the sling and re-enter, uh, so from the water, he could readjust this by simply unclipping a carabiner and reclipping it to the deck. So let's take a look at this end, and I'll demonstrate how that works. This carabiner is the correct carabiner in size. It's a mountaineering carabiner. It's got to be a high tensile strength. And um, again, you can see that the overall strap is 115 inches. We have seven adjustments down there. So there are actually, this is number eight, and you've got seven loops. So you've got actually eight uh, adjustments immediately. If you then um, take this loop and clip it in here, like this, and then reclip it to your deck, you've got an additional seven adjustment points. And some of these adjustments are very, very small, but the average human is that you're gonna sail with is obviously gonna be from a little kid to probably a tall adult, so that range works really well. You've got 16 possible adjustments. The last piece of the hardware that goes with each strap is one of these very cool uh, heavy-duty rubberized twist ties that you can get from most hardware stores. Uh, when you twist it, it's kind of permanent. You can open it up and it'll last and last uh, for months and months before you have to replace it. So let's take a look at the boat. So here's scamp number two. And scamp number two is rigged up as it would be out sailing. Uh, I've only got the starboard side rigged up. The hardware and additional hardware that you will need are two pad eyes, one aft and one forward. Both are through bolted inside the boat with a backing plate because you're going to put your full weight on this. And again, this little clip would be replaced by a larger carabiner, but I have it here for the purposes of the demonstration. If you come forward, you can see that uh, this pad eye again is here and underneath it I have a piece of 9mm uh, plywood as a backup behind under the deck. In the case of your scamp or your Wellsford boat, you probably don't have this turning block and you probably don't have this jib block. In fact, I'm sure you don't. In my case, in order to sail and have this thing on the ready, this is always rigged up outboard of these two items. The last thing that you might see here is my anchoring system, and you want to make sure that your strap is outboard of the anchoring system if you use any system like this. So let me explain what we've got here. This morning, uh, Rich and I decided that to really show the nature of this, because we want to make sure that uh, folks understand how the mechanics work, I've set up a yardstick and I've made two marks with blue tape. And this is the range that you will automatically be elevated up and into the boat. If you're in the water, if your boat capsizes, you're gonna be about like this, okay? You're gonna be in the water, maybe like this, and in order to get in, uh, you need some method. 
The pony stirrup method you've all seen in the scamp capsize video is one way to do it, but this is a far superior method. It's a guaranteed every time. And it doesn't require upper body strength. It requires the use of your thigh muscles, which are the strongest muscles in your body, but it doesn't require Herculean strength. You're in the water, you simply grab the strap and pull it and let it drop into the water. Then, I'm not going to demonstrate it with my feet because my boat is not attached to the trailer. I couldn't cross strap it. it. It might tip this way because we're indoors. But if you put your foot in the strap in the water, it'll go down to this blue mark. You'll make a hard V. So I'm going to say that this is my left foot and this is my right foot. And now I'm standing, I'm in the water, I've got my hands on the boat, I'm going to put my left foot in. I'm going to put my right foot in next to it. And then I'm very uh, carefully with my knees touching the boat, I'm going to start spreading my feet. Watch what happens. As I spread the, my feet, the strap gets shorter and all of a sudden I raise myself up that high. You can see that I'm now at the blue strap. That's all it takes to get you up to your waist. And then you simply fall into the boat. But as you do, don't go in face down. Go in, roll on your back with your head here, looking up at the sky, your feet here. You can reach up and grab the tiller. You can grab the sheet and your body weight is low. Once you've re-entered the boat by spreading your feet apart, you can pull this up into the cockpit. You can simply re-ribbon it. I call it ribboning by just twisting this into the storage position again like this. It doesn't have to be very neat as you sail away. Take the twist tie off, put it on the bundle like this, and you are ready to go for the rest of the day of sailing. Deploy. And now stowed again. So that is the reentry system. Again, it requires boats have a certain amount of freeboard. Too much freeboard, you're going to have to calculate the length of the strap. But this strap will work for most Wellsford boats, the Scamp, the Navigator, the Truant, all of these different designs, as well as boats of other designers who have somewhat the same uh, freeboard. So that's it. Thank you all. I hope this is helpful. Uh, it's something that's been very curious to a lot of people.